This is Volume 2 of the Private Pilot Written Exam Practice Questions. In this video, we will go over some more practice exam questions from the FAA Private Pilot Written Exam. When speaking to a flight service weather briefer, you should state. According to FAA.gov when requesting a pilot briefing, a pilot should identify themselves as a pilot and provide the following information. As you can see from the chart, the first step is to state whether the flight is VFR or IFR, so the correct answer is C. Why is frost considered hazardous to flight? According to Chapter 5 of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, if ice is allowed to accumulate on the aircraft during flight, the weight of the aircraft is increased while the ability to generate lift is decreased. Therefore, the correct answer to question 2 is C. Frost spoils the smooth flow of air over the wing, thereby decreasing lifting capability. Refer to the chart in Figure 17. What wind is forecast for St. Louis, STL, at 12,000 feet? You can see from the chart the numbers 2339-04 for STL at 12,000 feet. The first two numbers indicate true wind direction speed. So in this case add a zero to the first two numbers of 23 to get the wind direction of 230. The second two digits 39 indicate the wind speed, in this case 39 knots. The last two digits, 04, indicate the temperature. The correct answer is B. 230 degrees, true, at 39 knots. One phrase to remember is if it's in print, then it must be true. This means that wind direction in the winds and temperature aloft forecasts are true not magnetic. The mature stage of a thunderstorm begins with The correct answer is C. According to Chapter 12 of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, the mature stage of a thunderstorm begins with continuous downdrafts. Refer to the weight and balance tables on the left. Which action can adjust the airplane's weight to maximum gross weight and the center of gravity within limits for takeoff? The weights are 425 pounds for the front seat occupants, 300 pounds for the rear seat occupants, and 44 gallons of fuel in the main tanks. As you can see the empty weight of the airplane is 2,015 pounds and the max allowable weight is 2,950 pounds. Add the empty weight of 2,015 pounds plus the weight of the front and rear seat occupants and fuel to get the total weight of 3,004 pounds. As illustrated, the aircraft is 54 pounds over the max allowable weight of 2,950 pounds. Nine gallons of fuel would need to be drained from the aircraft since a gallon of fuel weighs 6 pounds. Divide 54 by 6 to get the correct answer of 9 gallons of fuel. Therefore, the correct answer is B. More information about weight and balance can be found in Chapter 10 of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. What action should a pilot take when operating under VFR in a military operations area? According to the Aeronautical Information Manual, pilots should exercise extreme caution when flying VFR in a military operations area when military activity is being conducted. The correct answer is C. Unless otherwise authorized, if flying a transponder-equipped aircraft, a pilot should squawk which VFR code? Pilots should squawk code 1200 when flying VFR. Squawk 7500 should be used during a hijacking. Squawk 7600 should be used during a communications failure and Squawk 7700 should be used for an in-flight emergency. See Chapter 4 of the Aeronautical Information Manual for more information on ATC procedures and Chapter 6 of the Aeronautical Information Manual for emergency procedures. What is one purpose of wing flaps? Flaps are designed to both increase lift and induce drag. The increase in induced drag produced by flaps enable pilots to make steeper approaches to a landing without increasing the airspeed. 
The correct answer is A. With regard to carburetor ice, float-type carburetor systems in comparison to fuel injection systems are generally considered to be. According to the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, float-type carburetor systems are more susceptible to icing. The correct answer is A. What does the red line on an airspeed indicator represent? The red line on an airspeed indicator represents the VNE speed, also known as the never exceed speed. Notice the chart on the right with the red line, this is the VNE never exceed speed. The correct answer is C. Thank you for watching this video. Please like the video and subscribe to our channel for more private pilot knowledge test questions and other aviation topics.